Hello, everybody. So my name is Alexis Sevchenko. Um, to quickly introduce myself, I've been in the uh, game industry close to 19 years at this point, um, primarily in the three different fields, which is uh, PR, communication, business development. Um, current day trip, the day trip topic is um, I'm working with uh, licensing uh, and um, uh, what we call relevant projects, which is basically uh, looking at the market, identifying opportunities that could be beneficial for the developers and sharing them with you guys. You know, I can't. Um, uh, before that, I was technical evangelist. I mean, so I have some of the technical background, uh, which is mostly a producership and a production, and um, uh, not currently, you know, as mentioned, it's licensing. So this presentation is specifically consists from two parts. I have four very different cases, which you would not call a very typical use of Unreal Engine. Uh, uh, it's uh, four existing games, some of them at the market, uh, some of them close to, close to be uh, released, and uh, presentation final, finalizes with a, uh, basically a pipeline you can implement and use for uh, uh, games specifically in the genre of hidden objects, you know, which could be beneficial for your production. So to start with, um, Total Poker, uh, by Total Games, uh, the company is located in Minsk, Belarus. Uh, uh, from the significant parameters of the project, it's been done in a very short term, it's four people. Uh, two people at the front end, two people at the back end, engineering. Uh, a lot of content being used from the Unreal Marketplace. Uh, uh, like one of the things that people ask a lot, you know, like there is a myth basically, you know, like that Unreal Engine is too heavy on the bills. You know, like this game uh, is uh, less than 50 megabytes uh, and it's, you can basically go and download it from the uh, Android Google Store and check it out by yourself. Uh, it's also blockchain infused if you're into that thing, you know, like so it's Unreal Engine is friendly due to the plugins with all of the uh, uh, innovative ideas in the market, you know, like you can use it as well. So uh, from interesting facts, um, uh, the team shares after the development of this game is um, uh, the game was heavy at the use of the existing and uh, additional custom based plugins. I don't know if you know about that, uh, for, but Unreal Engine is open source code. Uh, it's all the GitHub, you know, like you can go and download uh, basically, you know, like an engine and modify it the way you want and uh, uh, use a whole set of different plugins that can save you a lot of time, you know, like in the production. Uh, prototyping, that's something that we would touch a lot, you know, like uh, uh, Unreal Engine has blueprints. Uh, blueprints is basically a visual scripting tool that allows you to prototype, you know, it can use in the production a lot of features and that's very time effective. Uh, so the team used uh, blueprints to uh, prototype all of the mechanics and then transport it to the C++ uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to optimize uh, the application and make it run faster. Uh, it's uh, quite easy to assemble builds for two different platforms. In this specific case, it's, uh, uh, it's iOS and uh, it's an Android. Uh, just a couple of clicks of buttons, you know, like to get it compiled for two different uh, platforms. And um, uh, active community on the forums have uh, been helpful for the team to reach the deadlines on time and to uh, uh, finish the game in the parameters and the budget that they've been planning to. So now on a completely different phase, now Animal Super Squad by Double Moose is a professional team. Uh, it's um, six, eight people uh, from the development side. Uh, 15 months in the development, but the game was developed for um, uh, four different, different platforms. And uh, uh, it's current loud, you can check it out. Uh, I, I play it on Switch, you know, like the game is quite cool, you know, like so if you're interested, go download it. Uh, it's a uh, 200 megabytes in a loadable size, while the game is quite big. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a bunch of very smart decisions and tips and tricks, which are in the next slide, uh, of how the team achieved that. Uh, one of the uh, perky thing that a lot of developers are into these days is also the game operates uh, an editor uh, that provides users to build different levels and share it. All of us know at this point probably that this is a strong viral channel, you know, like to, to get the game running, uh, uh, specifically Fortnite by Epic Games, you know, like because it's so friendly from the point of view of uh, uh, streaming, uh, uh, basically uh, recording, you know, like some of the replays and share it, you know, like that's something that drives audience into your direction. So here, that, that's in this game, it's, it's an editor. Uh, game used uh, uh, Amazon GameSparks uh, as a cross-platform play, you know, like and to, to make sure the game works and uh, corresponds to uh, console requirements, which could be quite harsh. And uh, that works well for, for them. And um, uh, uh, there is a lot of, if you check the game, you know, like a lot of the core gameplay is physics, you know, like and uh, the game used the mix of regular and physical animations to give the game dynamic look. 
So um, this slide is basically, you know, like it's uh, uh, something I tell developers a lot, you know, like, and this is a part of a development culture, you know, like when you encounter different problems, there are three things which are magically corresponding to the bulletin points of the presentation that you need to keep in mind to make a successful game. First of them is uh, go with smart decisions. Sometimes restrictions and disadvantages you can have in a technology or the game can become your advantage. In this specific case, uh, the team uh, used the fact uh, that, that, that they wanted to save some space, you know, like with the art side, right? And they implemented uh, uh, a very smart approach with the textures to create a very unique art style of the game. Uh, the second is, I mean, like, while we all know that technologies, like any technologies, any engine, you know, like anything that you use can save you a lot of time and trouble, you know, like it doesn't mean that you should not build your own tools and it doesn't mean that you should not build your own decisions and implications, you know, like that you want to use in your game. Like in this specific case, which is a 20 kilobyte file, it's a, a 20 kilobyte file. Uh, it's a serialization editor that allows to uh, bring a lot of props in the levels and save a lot of time in the production uh, for a level design. You know, like it basically save a lot of time for the team. And the third one, uh, for the engine basically works. Uh, uh, the, the engine release schedule is works in a way where we release a version, then there is a preview, and then there is a new version. Right? Like typically, it takes two to three to four months between different. Uh, installations of the engine. Right now it's uh, getting to 4.20. Uh, in previews, we release a lot of experimental features, usually. And a lot of teams trying to stay conservative and not to use them because they've been using some other feature. You know, like, but in many cases, we encourage developers to actually go and check them because like, those experimental features could be quite beneficial from the point of view of existing problems. And you should not stop yourself from using them in the process. Uh, just, just some interesting facts and tips and tricks, you know, like the team wanted to share on the project. Uh, for, like mentioned before, the source code is open, you know, like you can go modify, use it to uh, any advantage that you, you can use it in the development. Um, like another thing, you know, like, uh, which is weirdly a little bit unknown fact for developers. Uh, while we have uh, a lot of uh, different kind of support and forums and open groups, we also have uh, premium support, uh, which we call it Unreal Development Network, which is a part of custom licensing. Uh, but if you're interested in the engine, we can open you a free trial uh, for a three to six months where you can get access to premium support. Uh, if you would want to just get in touch with me, you know, like I would be happy to, to provide you this. Uh, for C++, uh, get pure force, right? I mean, like get anything that the engine proposed because in a lot of cases, unfortunately, uh, developers do not use even a half of the things that we can provide them because they might not know about them or just because they're too shy. Don't be shy. I mean, like, just tell us what you need, you know, like, we'll try to help as much as possible. Um, uh, because the team is as professional as it is, I mean, like, they uh, decided to uh, go initially from the C++ and build all of the basic implementation uh, from the code. Uh, if you are experienced, if the team is experienced, if the developer is experienced, we implore to go and do that because that saves a lot of time. If not, I mean, you can start with the blueprints, we'll check the different examples, you know, like, it's an approach as well. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, uh, uh, once again, great multiplayer support. Uh, all the libraries that you would get in the engine are pre-installed. Uh, uh, great rendering pipeline. Uh, UI front-end and, um, uh, and uh, games having the 2D elements. Uh, there are two internal tools, as mentioned, Blueprints and also UMG, which uh, uh, Unreal uh, Editor for, uh, uh, to basically build interfaces, you know, like in all the front-end elements. Uh, it's very useful, very fast to implement. You know, like we you should check it out if you're building something, especially in the games like uh, like hidden objects, right? I mean, like or, for example, something 2D heavy or like something which is a lot of special effects. You know, like the stuff it could be used for that as well because there's an animation editor in it. So that's Animal Super Squad. Like mentioned, the game is at the uh, all, at all of the stores, at all the platforms. You know, like if you want to go and check it out and then load it, you know, like just do that. The next game. Uh, now, that's in a comparison with the previous case. That's uh, a completely different approach from uh, basically students. Uh, it's a, it's an eight-people team uh, from Champlin College. Uh, the game been developed. The game been developed in ten weeks of uh, being basically a twin shooter with a lot of perky, interesting features, very art fidelity, uh, good-looking, nostalgia-provoking. Uh, think micro machines, you know, like this kind of stuff, right? Toys. 
It's basically toys into the game. And uh, uh, they went from a little bit different approach, uh, being accenting fun. The game went through six prototypes uh, to identify the gameplay the team wanted to figure out without actually going to actual production. Uh, for, um, then uh, they started to move to the C++ and actually build an application, right? I mean, like, that's, that's been an approach, which is quite legit. Uh, while, being, while being big, you know, it's a 15 multiplayer levels in three chapters, uh, the game still is uh, under 750 megabytes, uh, and uh, I think it could be optimized even more to, like, close to 500. Uh, for, but, well, I mean, like, that's basically where they stopped. Um, now... This slide, you can check it out. I mean, like, but but the thing is, you know, like, with what, what what is important, you know, like to uh, mention here is uh, in this project and the next project we will look at, team being very proactive and actually using the native uh, tool set of an engine to uh, build their own internal tools to optimize the production uh, uh, and the time of the production, and that being quite helpful, you know, like in uh, in the process. So that's the type box uh, of the free the mind. Uh, for, uh, like, if you're interested to check for more detail, I'm sure we can probably get in touch with the developer. You know, like on or or you know, like get into this example more of a more of a deeper. You know, like if you're interested uh, on a personal basis, you can check out with me. Now, the fourth game, the fourth case, uh, like the aspect which I just mentioned, but more in the, more, more in the details. Uh, the game is basically uh, eight and a half months. It's uh, for developers at the beginning. Eight developers uh, in the end. Uh, some of the, I believe, some of the work being outsourced, uh, but that's been mostly music soundtrack, you know, like and all the jazz, you know, like it's been done uh, uh, externally. Uh, now, the Tirshiran, specifically, every developer who's been a part of this project, you know, like they've been using the blueprints to build additional tools that they used in their personal work pipeline. Uh, to uh, uh, to create a unique environment that helped them to develop the game and the given parameters. Um, so with this for mention, you know, like, and uh, let's think about it as a very quick R and D, you know, like of uh, what you can done with the technology and how you can just get all of these tips and trick analogies to uh, go into the field, you know, like of a hidden object pipeline, uh, for, which is used by a couple of developers at this point. Which I cannot name because they don't want to, you know, like they're still in production, uh, but they kindly shared some of the information and, uh, uh, and some of the uh, screenshots and slides of the work in progress. So what you want to do is basically, uh, uh, Engine consists of probably 20, 30 tools, right? It's big, you know, like you all heard about that Unreal Engine is used for uh, uh, very big AAA titles, you know, like that's, that's the word of the mouth of the market, you know, like, and a lot of people think that somehow that contradicts the fact that it could be used for smaller projects and tasks, which isn't true. So if you want to use an engine for a hidden object game, I mean, you would probably not need from approximately 30 tools in the process, probably 20, you know, like, and you can commit them, you can just turn them off, you know, like not use it and build your internal pipeline based on the following uh, elements. Like, uh, for a 2D games, uh, in general, we have a plugin which is called Paper 2D. Uh, it allows you to 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 uh, work with um, 2D and a 3D hybrid uh, um, uh, games genre. Uh, it um, basically it works with the tile sets, tile maps, sprites, sprite editor, and the physics. If you want to get like a free crash course of how to use it, uh, there is a couple of free game examples at the uh, Unreal Engine launcher. Uh, one of them being a match tree, I think, and another one being uh, a platformer. You know, you can download them. Uh, it's an open source code and check out how everything done internally from the first hand. Uh, you would definitely need to work with sprites. Uh, uh, probably use blueprints for uh, prototyping. Uh, for, uh, some of the elements, like if you, there is a tendency for a hidden object at this point for all the Hulk Hopa games to be more narrative based, right? I mean, like, and you would have like a lot of characters interactions and such, such, such. Uh, you probably would not even need to develop those mechanics because, like, if you would go to marketplace and just load them, you know, like for um, like thirty, forty dollars, you know, like they're on sale, you know, like you can just use them in the game, and uh, they're quite bulletproof, you know, like and and why to build it yourself. Uh, and uh, you would also need blueprints to basically test out and to probably build everything which is a supplementary systems. You know, like something not in general, uh, not 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 core things, but something you use as a mini games or something. You can boldly use blueprints for that. 
uh, combination of blueprints and UMG. Uh, for, that's for all the 2D elements. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's simple to build, it's very fast. You do not need engineers to do that. Uh, one of the big uh, advantages is basically that you can get your level designers or game designers to just script for the blueprints and that's very time effective and uh, it's just cheaper, you know, like, and it's not hard, it's not the rocket science. Uh, and definitely uh, be able to use marketplace uh, plugins uh, or to build your own plugins and upload it you know, to, the, to, to the marketplace and sell them yourself. Uh, size. Uh, now, once again, right, I mean, like, if, if I would get a dollar for every time people tell me, you know, like, that Thunder Engine uh, is something that, that, that build builds, which is, like, extra gigabytes, you know, like, like would be problem more rich, you know, like, but uh, in reality, do not, just do not do defaults at the packaging. You know, like you need some very specific things. You know, like when you make a build, you know, like just go click the right dots, turn off everything that you do not need in your application. You would drastically reduce the size of the build of the game. Uh, if you need like more specific information, instructions, we have a couple of flexions and the materials, you know, like you can get on this subject. Uh, uh, or you, once again, you can just get in touch with me, you know, like I'll get you to some of our third, uh, third party developers who can uh, provide you some expertise in this field. Um, uh, another thing, I'm, I mean, I don't want to go like too deeply, you know, it's just the 25 minutes, but you know, like you probably might have questions using an engine, how to profile CPU, GPU, right? I mean, like in all of this optimization work, uh, like once again, materials are out, you know, like, and you can get them online. Now, uh, potential gains, right? I mean, those screenshots are basically what, what they prototype using an engine, you know, like, which is not perfect, but that's a prototype, you know, like looks good and it, it's been done uh, in very short term. Like, uh, like all of the general mechanics for the game been built like in less than a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, pipeline been optimized for another couple of weeks, you know, like four months, team basically built uh, a whole pipeline uh, for a, uh, f f in Unreal Engine for this specific genre. So advantages, I mean like what you get using you for in the comparisons with a homebrew engine or other technologies, it's a sustainable technical solution for multiple projects and multiple platforms. It's easy to port, it's easy to scale between the teams, right? I mean like if you're working for a bigger house publisher, you know, like or a company that operates three, four, five projects at the same time, that's gonna be a unified technology solutions that drastically are gonna burn down your overhead, you know, like from the point of view of expertise and management and uh, management of resources and um, um, uh, overall uh, same technical approaches in different teams. Uh, it's a smaller and more efficient tech teams. Uh, well, typically you need like three, four engineers, like two, three engineers, right? I mean like, and a bunch of designers to service a game of the genre. Uh, like in case of uh, UE4 is probably gonna be one, maybe two, probably two C++ engineers, all of the rest is the blueprints. Uh, more designer friendly tool set due to the blueprints. Uh, a lot of technical job could be done by the designers. Um, for build size mentioned, uh, extremely time effective uh, from the point of view of prototypes. Uh, less hassle than Humbrew technologies uh, on the long run. When you uh, start servicing a game for a couple of years, you typically uh, get a lot of bugging troubles connected with the localization, support, operations, you know, like all those things, right? I mean, like, if you're using a technology which is uh, sustainable, you know, like, it's, it's much, much more probable, you know, if you get less of these problems. Now, uh, not on the engine side, you know, like, and this is uh, specifically part of my job, right? Uh, we tend to help developers. If you're using U4, uh, we can be helpful from multiple parameters. Uh, depending, starting from finances, you know, like we help developers with money. Uh, we have a program of grants, Unreal Development grants. You can apply with the project being done at the U4. You can get up to, uh, you can get up to fifty thousand dollars just, you know, because we like your game. Uh, if you're looking for a venture investments or a private equity, you know, like, and you have uh, a business plan that you can can show and prove, you know, like you can get in touch with me. Uh, at this point, we're working with uh, six venture funds. Uh, and a bunch of publishers, we can provide an introduction, free business development, and just overall help you on this front. Uh, we uh, also help with marketing. Uh, recently, we haven't announced it yet, announced it yet uh, uh, in the full detail, but in Europe, uh, we are starting, which is called uh, Identification Program. Uh, where you can apply with your project, uh, it's up to $50,000 of investment into the team, but not in direct investments, but in uh, um, uh, acquisition, identification, recognition, like all of the services and stuff. 
So you can apply for that one. Uh, and uh, 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 anything we can be helpful, uh, technical expertise, you know, like uh, uh, just getting you in front of the people, getting you free spaces at the shows, sponsoring them, we could do that as well if you're using Unreal Engine 4. And questions? Do you know if you have like an HTML5 or some kind of format that would work with uh, Facebook uh, instant games? Uh, we, we, well, Engine supports HTML. Uh, for the, the, you can build to HTML. And actually, we have three or four teams at this point. You know, like we can show some of the very good, interesting examples. Uh, I'm not sure it could be easily implemented into instant game messengers, you know, because it's, it tends to be more of a bigger games. Uh, it just because they just use it this way. Uh, I'm fairly sure that uh, you can probably build something, you know, like just to test in this field, and we can probably take some of the third party developers to try to prototype that. Uh, but the general problem would be still at the size of the build, you know, like still, right? I mean, like, but like I said, that's optimizable. Yep. The developer wants to get your grants or your support, mm -hmm. on which uh, stage should he contact you? So should it be just a prototype of a game or the mm. ready game? I would, say, I would say we, like, if, you, if you're applying for the grants, there is a couple of parameters to keep in mind. And uh, that would be level of the innovation of the game that you're sending to us. It should be uh, a deck, a presentation of the game being prototyped at this point. It probably should be a gameplay video of a couple of minutes. Uh, if, uh, prototype is enough to move forward, uh, but it's general knowledge, you know, like, and, and you probably need to get it a little bit closer to alpha to be more presentable to have higher chances to success. Okay, so okay. thanks a lot. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you.